How to treat PTSD, stress and anxiety, through the techniques of NLP. Some scary facts. As per World Health Organization, more than 6 million people today die because of stroke each year. Globally, 47 million suffer from dementia, with 7 million new cases appearing each year. And Alzheimer's disease is contributing to 70% of those cases. The prevalence of migraine is also more than 10% worldwide. And that are few of the scary facts. Neurological disorders are diseases of the central and peripheral nervous system. In other words, the brain, the spinal cord, the cranial nerves, peripheral nerves, roots, junctions, and muscles of the nerves. Many recent studies suggest that NLP has a potential as therapeutic tool in the treatment of symptoms of anxiety and depression associated with PTSD. The individuals who worked with NLP experts experienced an improvement in their emotional state up to 10% in all the three cases, depression, anxiety, and stress. So, is this a pathology of psychiatric or neurological nature? Nowadays, facing the current lockdown and virus spread, it is common for people to become anxious and depressed. In order to understand better those disorders, more than one science have to work together. That together is a combination of anti-anxiety treatments, antidepressants, as well along with psychiatric consultation and counseling. So in that case, mental health and mind science professionals must work together in order to resolve, understand the trauma better and treat it more efficiently and in the long term. So, as per mental health professionals, the anxiety or the trauma means threat or harm or loss of life associated with extreme fear. Whereas neurologists, they understand trauma as destructive biomechanical forces acting on the brain and other parts of the body. So it is critical that both scientists work together in order to resolve quicker that diagnosis and to provide treatment for that. So how does it NLP work? We need to understand that NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is a programming of the linguistics of our language, aiming to change our neurological network. And it has many and it uses many tools and techniques to be implemented throughout that treatment. Nowadays, we are going through grief, thinking on what has been lost or how to recover and how to compensate, how to come back to the old times and why now and why me questions. In order to improve that, we need to first think of a mind as a flexible muscle. As my NLP teacher used to say, think instead of the mindset as a mind flex, not as a fixed one. So she stated, if you imagine the mind as a jelly, that jelly sits in each shape that you placed it in. However, if you apply some heat, which is the neurologistic treatment and technology or techniques, what happens is you can mold that mindset or that jelly into any shape you like and make it the shape you really love and enjoy. So this is how neurolinguistic techniques work in most of the cases. Now the basic protection mechanism in our body responds through fight, flight or freeze tools, right? So this we have established these three responses already before our seventh year. Today, we still go back to the same feeling if we are faced with threat or fear. What we need to think now, there is only two emotions, love and fear. And since we love our life, we would like to change our brain, our mind, in order to embrace and to shape up the life that we really love and enjoy and stay on the top. 
let us first come in peace with ourselves and with our mind and stay there and say instead of I must, I have to, I should, I ought, choose your words wisely and say instead of that, I choose to. I choose to do that and not do this. I choose to go to work and not I must to go to work. This comes from a place of comfort, the choose one. Whereas I must comes from a place of fear. And what is fear? We all know that this is a false evidence appearing real. Once we understand that fear is not real and stress is actually vital and a very good stimulus to our life, we would get off our comfort zone and this will allow our brain and our mind to grow, become more resilient. The science of neuroplasticity is studying the muscles of the mind and basically as you need a physical exercise every day for your muscles, you need a mental exercise every day for your mind muscles to be in a good shape, and to evolve, to grow, to stretch, to become stronger. Neuroplasticity requires us to engage in experiences that provide sensory, emotionally and mental stimulation. Our optimal performance indeed is achieved when we are exposed to stress and when we recover from stress. So this perpetual back and forth where we are exposed to stress, certain level of stress that allows us to grow and further afterwards we allow ourselves the proper rest and recovery period will indeed help us to become stronger, more resilient and to shape up a better mind flex in our mind in our lives as well. So, what else is very important to say? So, building new habits in the new world that we are entering now into is really requiring a lot of flexibility in our mind. And in order to train our mind to be flexible, we can start with incorporating new habits or new practices such as meditation, deep breathing, walks in nature that will help also to, to the flexibility of our mind and promote growth and resilience. We enter into a new time with many changes into the workplace and our social life. People are used to do now working from home and when they will go back to work, the brain will make them think they are going back to the first day at the school. And that will become and that will be promoting even higher levels of stress. So, what are the solutions? I have prepared for you today three powerful techniques on NLP. Number one, circle of excellence. This is a very easy yet very powerful NLP technique that can help you in times of exhaustion, feeling anxious, depressed, being not being able to move ahead or not having a sense of direction in your life. Everybody had a time in their life when you felt best, at your best. When you were at perhaps at the family or at the work, you felt as a leader that everybody follows. And where you felt that, I want you to now close your eyes and sit somewhere comfortably. And just go back to that memories where you felt at your best. Good. Now, where do you feel that feeling? Think about it. Perhaps it's in the heart, in the belly. What color it is? And think about that state of excellence that you have at the moment. What size it is? Is it inside the body? Is it outside the body? What does it perhaps say to you? Now, feel great and imagine you can step into that circle or state and be and have that in all the time you wish. You could decide to put that state or that circle of excellence into the chair where you're sitting and working every day or into the bed, perhaps, if you have inability to sleep better. Now, after you establish your circle of excellence where you feel at your best, you feel amazing, you can smell it, you can hear it, you can see it, how you're at your level best. You can go back to the normal state and observe what has happened to you. How does it feel there and how do you feel here? And again, step back to the circle and again, 
recall that feeling of success. Make it bigger, brighter, with brighter colors. Put some sound, perhaps, that you love. And engage all your senses, because we are sensual beings, right? So take a deep breath. See the brightness, see the magnificence, see the excellence that you are performing when you are at your circle of excellence. Now, you can decide to put that state wherever you wish, and you can decide to carry it with you at your work even. Neuroplasticity is teaching us and our mind how to change and how to stay more flexible. And this, by the way, promotes also our body to be flexible, much more flexible, because everything starts from the mind, isn't it? Instead of also saying, I am so, so hardworking, choose the word I am playing so hard. So choose words that you love and enjoy. It's very important what language do you use. So, technique number two. Spinning feeling. Think of a situation that caused you anxiety in your life. Think about that feeling. Where does it feel and where does it go to? That technique is very important and is, is very good, beneficial, when you want to establish that when you have a, a response of the anxiety somewhere in your body. So, and you want to change that for the better. So think of that feeling of anxiety for a future event perhaps you have. Where does it go? Does it start in the belly goes up? Does it go down? Does it simultaneously go up and down? Establish that connection with your body and think about the move. Now, close your eyes and be even more precise about it. Follow the path of the feeling and notice what has, what is the size of it. Is it small and then big? Does it expand beyond the body or is it staying in the body? How does it feel? Now, determine the color that it has. What color it has in the body, outside the body. And finally, also, where does it spin? Is it clockwise or anti-clockwise? If it has a direction of spin, where it will be? Now. Put yourself in a situation, assessing this feeling, where you now suddenly change the spin direction. Reverse it. Change the color that you have to something that you like. Maybe it was green, now you make it pink. And put some sparkle into that, just to make it festive, like a Christmas tree lighting or a fireworks. Something that you really enjoy. How does it feel now? Would it be better to have that response to a stressful situation next time when you face it, rather than the old one? Now, again, put yourself in another situation where you most likely experience, will experience in the future something or you don't like to go into a situation because you are so anxious about it. Do the exercise again. Spin the other way around, put your favorite color, add some sparkles to it. And put yourself in that situation with that response in the body. How do you feel? How does it change? Perhaps if you remember the old response, you can slowly shift it to the new one and see what happens, how your body reacts. So, number three technique. That's a very powerful, also a very simple yet profound technique. And it's called the timeline shift, timeline therapy. Now, we know that anxiety occurs mostly in the future. So when you dwell on something, will it be better? Will I fail? Will I be successful in that meeting, event, or something that maybe an interview, important interview that stays in, ahead in your life? Imagine a timeline now, your timeline, with three directions, so your present, your future, and your past. Now, imagine your timeline having that three directions, present, future, past, regardless of where that present, future, past it sits. Perhaps it's on the right, and on the left. You are always sitting in the present, but your future and past can be also forward, backward. Now, I want you to again sit down comfortably 
And think about that. Where is my future? Where is my past? Is it ahead of me? Is it back? Is it right, left? And define those. Good. Very good. So now, I want you to think of and point to that direction. Point to the front or point to the back. Point to your future now first. Good. Now point to your past. So now you are sitting in the present. And that's your timeline. Take time now to see the color of your timeline. What color it has. It's a big, bright or perhaps neutral color. Give it a color and take a deep breath. Now, if I ask your subconscious mind to visualize the timeline of your life clearly, think about now of yourself being in your present and seeing sitting in the timeline of your life. Think about an event that really stressing you out. Perhaps it's something in the family, perhaps it's financial situation, anything that perhaps you have to deal with and you don't like. Now, something that really gives you nervousness, close your eyes and visualize that future situation playing out. Where do you feel that nervousness in your body? In the stomach, in the belly, on the solar plexus, heart, head. Get into that feeling and also rate it from 1 to 10. Give it a rating. So how, how, how stressful is that? How nervous you feel about it? From 1 to 10, 10 being the highest and 1 being the lowest. Take a deep breath again. And now let's for a moment imagine you sitting at your present, if your timeline, and asking yourself if there were opportunities in that future situation future event that comes up for me what could that opportunities be what could that benefits be what could be a benefit that I take from that future situation for myself for my personal development for my growth for my business for my leisure for my family if things were better than I could ever imagine Think about it. What are the benefits of that challenge that you will step into in the future? Take a deep breath now and imagine what are the things now that you can experience if that situation, if that event played out at its best. If the meeting went above and beyond your expectations and you were doing so perfectly right. And that was amazing. So think about that. Now, still with your eyes closed, I want you to be again present where you are at the moment, at your present point of your timeline. Now, I want you to imagine that you could float above your timeline. You could just lift yourself up, up and higher and you could see now from the height, from a comfortable height that you have on your timeline in front of you see the future the past and the present see completely the whole timeline above you are above and you see that below now i want you to float back slowly towards your future float 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 float, float towards the future past one hour after the successful completion of those events that you were so anxious about Float beyond the successful completion where everything plays out at its best and everything really materialized so well and everything really got that much of potential and you were so successful at. Now it's completely over the event that you are anxious about and you can take a slow deep breath and you feel so great about the way how this event finalized and was finalized and that you finished everything with such a great success. Everything is now fine. Think about that anxiety that you feel that you felt before when you were in the present. Look back at your present, wherever it is, back and front, left or right, and think about it. So 
what of an anxiety I have and, and how comfortable I feel about after that everything successfully is finished. And notice the anxiety is completely gone, isn't it? At the moment, you will come back now as slowly as you will learn what actions perhaps you need to take in order to complete that event successfully. Now, having passed the situation successfully and everything played out at absolutely your level best, think about what actions perhaps you could take to get that benefit or to, to learn that new action or that new step in order to perform at your best in that future event. And then as you, as soon as you know your top actions that you have to take or you choose to take now for your successful completion of event, you may decide to float back to your present. So now float back, still with your eyes closed, make, allow your subconscious mind to make all the adjustments you need for that event in order to happen with its all success. Now, taking another deep breath in and all the way down to your belly, you are back into your present. Try to think about that event again. You might even realize as much as you try to think about that anxious feeling as much as elusive and lost it becomes, isn't it? How are the things different now? So that was three of the techniques that we use in NLP and that are my favorite techniques. There is plenty of other more but you can start practicing those ones and then later on we can also talk about a few others. Much of the modern anxiety is based on the nagging fear that we have in our brain that we can't cope with situation or something is out of our control. NLP takes a different approach to treating anxiety and fear. NLP acknowledges the unconscious and the subconscious mind, but it acknowledges it as a friend, our friend, that seeks to help us in the troubled times. And even though didn't make the best cho choice or the best job always, we help through remodeling the mind or the, the remodeling the thinking about the situation or event. It helps us to be the best friend with our subconscious and conscious minds and to use it for our best at its best potential and for our best results. There is plenty of other techniques and I hope to see you again and to learn few few of the rest. Have a good day ahead. Wishing you a lot of success.